Hello friends, welcome back to another episode of Gloomhaven, the Guildmaster campaign. So the beginning of the first part of this episode is some bookkeeping. We have a perk point for the brute, for the brute and another perk point for the brute. So we'll claim this reward, head over to the brute and let's see oh that's right there is one more where is it enhancement there it is so we also have the air mastery um, enhancement so we can start infusing air uh, with with applying a sticker to the ability cards I think that's it. Yep. Okay. So let's have a head over to the brute here where we can apply two perk points. Um, let's see. I haven't clicked over here, so I haven't had a chance to look at these. Bulwark, Pacify, these are probably good options here because this allows this allows him to uh, miss or produce uh, less than ideal damage but still apply a, a condition onto the enemy uh, this one will allow him to have a shield after the attack so if he's in a less than ideal position for that um, the, pro the thing that I have against this perk is that since it's a surprise I can't plan for it you know like if I make an attack and then I get the shield um, it's it's a nice surprise however I can't really plan around making sure that I get a shield you know so uh, and this might not even come up in us in a scenario at all um, another one would be this rolling modifier now, obviously these might not come up in a scenario as well, but um, it, it is something that's guaranteed to, to help, whereas this one might not help at all, um, if, if that makes sense. Uh, I have the same kind of feeling about Pierce. Um, if I'm going to be attacking something with a shield, then um, it's helpful when it happens, but it's it's going to be more rare for this to be useful. Same thing with thrust, and so I I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this outburst because when that does happen, it's huge. It's a very uh, big help, and I think I'm going to take another stun. Yeah, let's go with stun. Uh, maybe in the few, in the next perks, um, which is coming up soon, I think we could possibly get him to level up this round. Uh, maybe maybe the spell weaver, depending on where we're going. Um, I might take I might take this one, or I might start adding some plus ones. Uh, the problem with this is this is going to when you take both of these, it's really uh, just filling this deck with plus ones so it's going to make that um, more of a it's going to happen more often anyway okay less talking uh, my my thought was to move in this direction to start unlocking some of the, um, the quests that I can't reach in this forest region over here, so I will take care of a shot in the dark. Um, and I think that was all that I needed to do. Let's take a look. We we have all the cards that we want. Uh, we're not dealing with anything with a lot of shields, so I can leave trample out again. And we're getting six XP in this 
uh, as a reward. So as long as the Spellweaver can take 9 XP and the Brute, I think he only needs 5 XP. Yeah, 5 XP. So it should be pretty easy for the Spellweaver and the Brute to uh, level up. So anyway, let's head in this direction. A shot in the dark. You are greeted by a villager who had escaped the demon spine. He informs you that after the Vermlings initially attacked, his friends assumed they could go to the pub, have a pint of ale, and wait for it all to blow over. But apparently that advice doesn't work too well in a crisis. You head down the forest track to the slosh squirrel. It seems pretty, it seems pretty well used considering the only leads it only leads to a pub well that's why it's well used because there's a pub at the end of this road as you near the building arrows whiz past your party from all directions you are under attack okay so we just need to kill all enemies in all rooms we're looking at bandit archers and vermling scouts both both having normal and elite uh, types and again I think we're all fine so let's just enter Sometimes it uh, takes a little bit of time to load. Okay, there we go. What the? Bandits working with Vermlings? These guys are going to have a lot of range attacks. Best get up close and personal. Yeah. That's easy, easier said than done. Uh, okay, so the path goes in this direction I'm wondering if we're actually going to end up in the slosh squirrel here and this is kind of the road that gets there or if we're just going to be fighting in the forest the whole time um, I really like when uh, in the board game there's a mixture of you know like going from a forested area to an icy cave or um, a big plains going into um, a building. Th those those tend to have some more kind of like story, and it, it it just just makes it more fun. So anyway, we want to get her away from everyone. So I guess we need to move. Let's move him up and the brute up, and then we can bring her back behind them. Okay, it was stuck there for a minute. It looks like we're fine. It's not... Everything's fluid motion, so that's good. Good, good. Okay. So, we have an elite vermling back in this corner, one in front of us. And then two normal archers and the elite bandit archer uh, back there. We do have a trap here. If I hold down uh, tab, you can see a better uh, what the layout is. We do have just, it's just one trap and then the door is in this direction. Okay, how can we use that trap? It does five damage, which is pretty nice actually. I think if we can warding strength just put him right here and then push her there that would kill that one really quickly right uh, and let's use eye for an eye to move up with um, I 
Let's see. I think, let me do the, the tinkerer first and we can figure out where uh, she'll be better used. Toxic Bolt would be a good one. We could probably hit anybody. One, two, three, four. We wouldn't be able to reach her, um, but that's fine. Maybe what we can do, however, is put him here, and then we can reach anybody, so we can figure out who's going to need that poison more. Um, or we could do Stun Shot instead, but I have an idea... Um, we could also put a stun trap out and try and pull somebody into it next time. Hmm. I think I'll go with that, but my problem with this is I don't think he's in a good position to to put one out and then for it to be used in the next round. So <laughs> I get it. I, I do a lot of switching. It's the first round, so there's a lot more freedom that I can make more choices. And so I go through as many choices as I can. Um, he will be going first which I don't think we'll get. I don't think that's going to hurt. Uh, next is, I think if we go something like this, flash burst or I'm thinking we could go really late with something like fire orbs. And then we can move around. Hmm. Let's use Yeah, I guess so. I guess we can we can move with frost armor and then fire orbs, but we'll see where everyone is at the end of the round or like towards the end of the round, and then we can move to a maybe a better position to hit three of them. Um, I think that's going to be a, a good opening. It's always a good opening ability for for her, in my opinion. So the Vermling Scouts will be moving. That's going to be helpful um, in both that. But they're going at right after her. OK. So I just have to make sure to put her in a position not to get hit by them. Uh, both of these are going to be attacking two targets. So we need to make sure. Oh, actually, that's not a Vermling, is it? Okay. We need to make sure that we put our targets closer to them. I think we're going to be killing one of them anyway, so it's fine. Um, let's put that stun trap right here. Yep. That might help us in the end because then this vermling one two three four um one two three four now nah, i think it's going to end right there actually but let's start dealing some damage i think to possibly the the elite back there yeah And 
and don't worry about the rest of your items. Okay, so we're going to move up here. Skip. And warding strength right there. Nice. And then push her into that trap. Okay. All right, so two damage incoming, we can block that. Three damage incoming there. Uh, we can block that too, so he's... Oh, ah, four. Okay, that's one, two, three, four. Yeah, so she can reach any else, anyone else. So that actually worked out in our favor pretty well. Um, now, I don't think I'm going to be able to get into a position to use this, actually. One, two, three. Yeah, I might, actually. I'll have to go right here, though. I could use this attack instead, but I think I'll, I'll be able to use that next round. Um, maybe. Actually, now that I think about it, I won't, but... But I think this is still going to be a good opening for her. Yeah, so one, two, three. Let's use our Eagle Eye Goggles since it's our first major attack with her. I could actually use the Minor Potion too. That might be helpful. It increases the chance of this one dying. Um, I kind of thought it would be, nah, you know what, let's just do it. Let's use it, get it over with. Um, it does increase chances of killing more of them, so let's go. Well, one health left there. One health left there, nice. And two health left there. So not so bad. Uh, we don't want to pull any cards back, and I don't need to go invisible. We could just go early next round. Three damage. We can take that. Perfect. I guess it was move three and not move four. But Perfect. So... I already know what I want to do with him, so let's do that. We can move and heal a little bit. And then use the hook gun to pull one of these into this uh, stun trap. Probably the one that has the most health, because we should be able to kill this one anyway. Uh, next is we want to be using her to go as fast as possible. Um, and actually, I was I was thinking of using the top ability of this one, but I could use Cold Fire instead. And if that's the case, then we'll be doing damage to both of these, killing this one. That one would be stunned, and then it's just a matter of killing this one with the Brute. So that might be the best option here. That does mean that she's using both of these, but I can get them both back uh, next round. So I might do something like that. Uh, both of these meaning the top action um, being an attack three at range three. I've used both of them if I go this route, and I think I am. Let's go with Hmm. One, two, three. Yeah, okay. I could use this and something like that. And I think I'll do that. 
Because this way I can hit here and then move up and then hit again there. Um, if they're if they're not so uh, devastating attacks, then I might just open the door because it's just a small room after that. Um, yeah, so I might do that. We'll see though. End. Yeah, so they're all going to be attacking. Um, I was hoping for maybe a loot action from the scout, and then I would open that door. Uh, these could be a lot worse. So I will I'll consider opening the door when it gets to his turn. Um, because, actually... Yeah, we can heal him right now. Let's undo. Maybe, maybe I need to do something different. So, let's let's make this attack. Yep. Good, good. And because they're both, or. Uh, because that one is dead, I know this one will be disarmed, so we can we can use that to heal him up. And I think I will open that door now that he's fully healed. I think that's going to be fine. Uh, we can just move in with them early in the next round too, so. Uh, let's see here. Now do I want to get those cards back immediately? I don't think so. I mean, it might be nice, but I, I just don't think that it's absolutely necessary. Um, the problem is that, well, she does have a 26. I was thinking we need to be going early next round, probably. So, yeah, let's let's skip this for now. Maybe we'll we'll consider once we so once we know what's behind that door, we'll we'll take a look. Okay. So, we'll hit here with the disarm. Even if it didn't die, it would, have, it would be disarmed. And we're going... Yeah, one, two, three, four. I was thinking of using his boots. But... I still have... Balance measure. Yeah, I still have balanced measure, leaping cleave in my hand, so I think that's I can use the the move and then attack X um, combination there with the boots. Let's go open this door. Um, e. That's a lot of incoming damage, but. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if they all pull a plus one, that's 12. <laughs> Yikes. Um, well, I have to live with it now, so. Oh, times two on that one. Okay. Okay, so a minus one, that's not bad. I do have that uh, in this case. <laughs> I was just about to say, I do have that ring if I get a four or more damage. Um, okay, let's pull him here now. And he's dead anyway, so. So... That's one, two, three, four. I don't think that he has any other loot except for the card that I have in the hand now, so that's unfortunate. Uh, but we will we will take it. Uh, skip action. Yeah, two more damage and last attack. One. Okay. 
So I got a little lucky there, but with that ring. Oh, there was another one. I didn't even see that one. <laughs> little bugger. Uh, interesting. Okay. So I did get even more luckier than I uh, was about to say with that um, with that ring that helped out quite a bit. Uh, it's just a matter of getting in their face now and dealing as much damage as possible. But uh, I could do something like like this. Where is it? Spare dagger and shield bash, and just use the shield. Um, I could also. I mean, I think that's going to be my better option. I could also use Leaping Cleave. I have Skewer, but Skewer is not going to be very useful at the moment because um, I can't get to a location that I can use it, right? So. Um, But Leaping Cleave might be a good option right here because this, this guy has 5 health and she has 6 health. So we could possibly deal quite a bit of damage with that. The problem is I'd have to move to get there. So let's go with this first and then I'll come back to him once everyone else has gone. Um, one, two, three and deal some damage we definitely need to be we could go up and heal him too actually where's that so she has that one other heal too he does have a healing potion as well so i think he'll be fine with that uh let's move up with Let's move up with this, and then we'll have... Now we can recover some cards too, right. So let's go up with these two cards and figure out the better option for the next round. Uh, last, we need to be... If I could stun somebody, but I don't think I can get in range. One, two, three, four. That would put me into range, actually. I was kind of hoping to pick up some more of this money, but I don't think I should be... Uh, if I'm moving through this quickly, then... Then, yeah, I shouldn't be as... Uh, greedy. One, two, three, four, and then I can stun somebody. I guess that's what's going to have to happen. We're going to have to leave nine gold behind. Uh, but maybe we can get all of this money and then the rest in there. So, Okay. End. Alright. I wanted to take a look at his, but I think he'll be fine. Uh, they're not going to be dealing too much damage. The... Uh, the Vermlings, because only two can stand in front of them at a time. So the first, these first two will come up here, and then this one won't be able to attack. So I think we'll be fine. Um, but the Bandit Archers, both of them are going to be doing eight, uh, possibly eight damage. So... Let's definitely shield up. And I'm gonna go for one of these. I'm gonna go for her. That would, if I get that times two, then it would be uh, killing her. And then I have a spot for skewer. Or if I get that stun, then it's one less. Um, attack <laughs> there it is perfect so one fewer attacks coming in that's that's lovely let's let's use that heal 
And actually, since the tinker is running up here, we can act, we can stun the other one. Which is ideal. The other ones are going to do two damage, or attack two instead of attack four. <clears throat> Let's do that. Times two, okay. So both of them are stunned. We got lucky with one of them. Um, but not so bad. Not bad. Now we want to move up here we can pick up some money and I kind of want to attack one of these but since they're stunned I think it's fine for now so let's go for I guess the only other option I can't see the other ones okay now do I want to pick up a card um, I could use this heal for the next ring, uh, next round, or yeah, I think I want to use this now. So let's let's get this out of the way. Um, I'm thinking mana bolt to make sure that I go early. Hmm. Definitely mono bolt. This loot could be nice, but it's only for one. But ooh. And I'm I'm considering to take it because she could stand somewhere like here or here if I can do enough damage in the next round and then she can pick up the, the loot that's left over if they're all dead. Um, I can't imagine that I'm going to be able to kill most of them in, in the next round. So I think I will, I think I'll take it anyway for the top action and then if I get lucky, I'll use it. So cold fire. Now I don't have a way to bring in ice or fire. So we'll have to figure out a way to, to get that going. Okay. She could move in and go invisible. That would help out quite a bit actually. Yeah, so let's there's something there, I think. Not bad, just one damage. And zero damage. That shield was extremely helpful. Okay. I see what to do here. I'm going to have to do it this way, unfortunately. I can move here and then skewer. Um, yeah. That doesn't, that does make this uh, not available for here, but it's it's already a an attack four action. So I think that should be fine. Um, the other thing that I could do is something like leaping cleave and balanced measure and I could jump in here and you know uh, hit somebody really hard potentially the Birdling Scout so I think I'll go this route anyway 35 is kind of late so we'll see what I can do with that um, I want to be going late with her So let's take the two. Let's take the two uh, slowest actions. Go as slow as possible, so that if there's space in here, that would be nice. And I have an idea for where to get fire from. 
flamethrower. So I could, after he moves away, I could basically just step up. We could use that. I'm, I'm not too worried about incoming damage from these guys. Uh, maybe I should be, but I'm not going to use stun in this room. I'll probably use it in here, uh, opening that door. Yeah, let's do it that way. This should do quite a bit of damage. They are going super late too, so that's nice. Uh, we have a chance of killing a few of them before they go. Uh, this is going to be a ton of damage. Um, attack four, four, and three. So let's get over here. Yeah. I'm considering I could skewer these guys instead of here. And I might do that actually, now that I think about it. Because if I skewer here... Ah, uh, but he won't be able to... Hmm, attack four. They're attacking for it anyway. Now let's let's stick with my initial plan here. Let's move in. Because if I miss, then at least somebody is right next to him. Uh her. And that would uh create the disadvantage attack against him so but let's let's do this I'm wondering if it's still yep it's still there um, I'm not going to use it anyway but I just want to test that out let's see if <laughs> plus three there and then the zero here that's unfortunate. However, it worked. It works better this way because now when she attacks him, the brute, um, it will be disadvantage. That will be at least helpful. And now the tinkerer will be able to move in to this spot. Oh, I see. Skip action. Move in. Now the Tinker is going to be taking a couple hits here. Um, the Brute will take these two, and then the Tinkerer will take these two. Maybe. We'll see what happens. Uh, skip movement. And we want this way. Let's use the Eagle Eye Goggles. And I mean, I might as well use this too, right? Yeah. Let's let's try to make sure that they die. There, not bad. So this one's now wounded, so it will die as well. Um, I could ah right. He still has the leather armor. He has. I think he has one left in that. Yes. Um. Okay, not bad. Here we go. Oh, the muddle came from from him, so that that works even better. That one's dead. So moves up and. So this is unfortunate. I can't get in here <laughs> in order to get into the position to uh, to help. Um, undo. What I could do though is use this, and then I can get into that position. That could. Eesh. 
I'm burning a lot of cards with her really early, but we only have one more room left. Um, yeah, I'm not too worried about it. Let's just, I guess, let's just have some fun with this, right? I wish I could go back and forth, but I don't think that's... I mean, that shouldn't be possible. And we'll just move right in here. I'm not going to use that. I'll use that uh, the invisibility cloak next round. Um, so I already know what I want to do with her. We're going to loot and maybe punch. We'll see. Probably just punch her. Um, with you, let's make sure that I don't think I can heal anyone up. I mean, we could use it, but he's not really... Uh, I mean, this could work. I'm thinking I'd rather just get him moving into here so that we can... Hmm. Uh, so that we can get ready for the next room immediately. We're probably going to have to take a long rest in here before we go, um, but that's fine. Yeah, so move and enhancement field, sure. Whatever is there. So first, let's see about killing him. Not bad. We have all of this stuff here, but I just, I can't use it. Uh, and we will, yeah, let's just burn it. That's quite a bit of money. I don't want to leave that behind. And there's no reason to, uh, to open this door right now. Skip and skip. We're just going to um, long rest here. Okay, long rest, long rest, and I'm just going to take a long rest anyway. Um, I know I have a couple cards here, but there's no reason for me to to wait to waste a turn to take a long rest when we're opening the door next round anyway so we'll take the long rest um sometimes sometimes this is more tactical to do it when you still have cards in your hand um i don't think it's a bad move at all so uh yeah just a whole bunch of long rest it does heal them up which is nice as well so what card? Let's go with... Let's go with Eye for an Eye. I know that's an earlier card, but it's one that I won't... I won't be using uh, too much in this. I have enough people... A couple people to heal them. Um, the healing would be nice, but... Ugh, I have... Okay, yeah, I did it. And for him, the tinker, let's go with... I'm thinking tinker's tools might be a good one to get rid of. There is one right in front of him, so maybe I'll leave it. Um... We want to use hook gun in there. Uh, we could use it right where we're standing, basically, and pull someone into it if that's the case. Um, yeah, so let's let's drop Tinker's tools and and we can't get rid of this one. 
I'll probably end up pulling this in next round. Oh man. This one's a tough one. Let's drop this one. Frost armor. Okay. All right, so we need to be jumping in here. Is there a way to use that one? What's this? Yeah, I don't know. Small bug, one, two, three, four. Let's do it. I think this is going to be a good opportunity for this. I could potentially hit two. Uh, potentially make two interesting attacks moving in there. And I still have, you know, my, my hide armor and uh, heater shield to, to help me out. Uh, 42. We want to be going after 42. Ugh. Uh, 80 and let's go with flashing burst that way I can go early bring something in or go early or late bring something in the mystic ally and then use monobolt something like that um, next is the tinkerer well we want to go after 42 so let's take a look at these later cards Let's take hook gun because if something is standing right here, but I need to be going a little earlier too. So I'll use enhancement field. If nothing's there, then I'm just going to have to kind of take a, a different path. Um, no, let's take proximity mine so that I can move a little bit further. It's 61 or 62. Uh, it's unfortunate. There's enough. There's a big spread through here, but let's see I mean maybe I get lucky and if I don't I can get into a position where I could potentially uh, get lucky right so okay so one two three four five six let's use the boots of striding now this is when it's going to be the most useful um, oh wait I don't I don't actually need to click on it right away. Okay, undo. Just undo. <laughs> let's let's open the door first, and then I can add it. Yeah. So of course, take a look at that. Oh, well, there we go. So we've made it to the slosh squirrel. We followed the path, and we've gone inside to the slosh squirrel. That's that's what I'm talking about. I really like that. Um, I think they're about to do a, some, uh, okay, I need to stay away from them and I should be fine. Let's go. Let's move way back here if I can, right? Can I? I can't. But I can get next to these two and that will be helpful. Um, yeah, let's do this, and then I can even use these back here. Six. So, um, unfortunately, it wasn't in a straight line. Of course, when I open the door, this is in front of it. And then nobody's standing in the way. But look at that. That would have been amazing to stand right here. Uh, and we're just going to attack her. One down. Three damage. We'll reduce that one. Ouch. Okay. 
Good. So standing next to her definitely helped. Um, with the uh, disadvantage. So nobody is here. And that's that's fine. I guess I should have probably known that, right? Uh, so we'll undo that. Let's move into a position that... Oh, yeah, I need to be careful here. Let's make sure that I don't run through that trap. So right here is probably the best position, right? Because I don't want to stand next to them. They're not moving, but they are attacking pretty hard. This still allows me to hit her and then I can pull her. Um, pull her closer in. Miss. That's that's too bad. But there. Okay. We don't want to use the thing now, so let's find it. Okay. That's fine. She can just stand right in the doorway. Can't stand here. Uh, skip the rest of that movement and let's use flashing burst to I could go for well actually I could go for any one of these four. Um I'm more worried about I'm more worried about the archers. I think the archers have more potential damage than the uh, Vermling scouts do. So let's go for this archer here. <laughs> Look at that. Times two. Killed. Uh, we're not going to go invisible yet. I have a better plan for where she can do that. Oop. So... I'm considering either either doing the push that would that would likely kill her or I mean the this one would kill it kill her as well and it's my only chance to use it because the rest of these are elite enemies Hmm. I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way that I can still use them later. So I think I'll use Fatal Advance just to kill him, kill her with Fatal Advance. Um, it does give me two XP and that's what I'm thinking about this doesn't give me any XP um, and I can potentially like maybe put myself here and push one of these guys out this way so I'll I'll try to I'll try my best to try to uh, figure out a way to use these traps if, if not then then oh well and I think let's go with well, let's go with shield bash all right i could use the the bottom action just stand where i am or i could maybe move up closer to her we'll we'll see what's what the options are um okay monobolt made from the ether and i need to make sure so i have two cards here i have to make sure i get this one back reviving ether um, so one of these three will go away. So I'm, I'm okay if I bring in aid from the ether, then I should be fine. I'll take this one and then one of these two back, basically. Well, not basically, that's, that is what I would... Okay, 
So I, I might be able to pull her in, uh, pick up the two points, and then... Okay. Net shooter, I want to make sure that they stay in that corner. And then it's a matter of... I could use enhancement field, I guess, just to make sure that's a, a better attack. That would also help her. Oh, no, it wouldn't because she's going too late. Well, I could make her go later, though. She's just going to be standing there anyway. Let's do that. That's going to help her with enhancement field, then. Okay. I mean, she's not going to be attacked anyway, so. Um, okay. Well, let's kill her then. No, this is overkill. I want the experience. That's uh, that's the, the idea here. Um, and I might as well just... It's an attack for three. I'm going to take the shield instead of moving up closer to her. Okay. Whoops. Enhancement field first. So this little guy over here is just going to run up and attack for two. Uh, nope. Whoa, 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 whoa. Strange. Okay. So we want them to be staying there. And I mean, I might as well use the eagle eye goggles again, right? Let's do it. Yeah, not bad. Just two damage. That's fine. So I can use that sun or the light, and I can attack right there. That one's dead. And now I can summon the mystic ally right here. I don't need to go invisible or anything. Let's just run up to her and disarm her, I think. Um. Let me think about this. So I could just kill this guy, and then I don't even have to worry about the elemental dying, or the mystic ally, not elemental. So we could take a long rest. I don't really think that's necessary. Nah, let's take the short rest. It's not necessary. Sure, we'll burn that. We can go really early and make sure we get some cards back. Um, and heal him up in the process, sure. And... A uh, hook gun is down there. I don't think I need to worry about looting right now. Um, but because this one's certainly going to be alive a bit longer. <clears throat> we could stun him. And... Yeah, let's stun him and find a good position to, to stand so we can get the most loot as possible. <clears throat> no. 
Oh, attack right behind you. Uh, okay. Heal him up. And... If I cancel this, I can bring her back in. I can also use that healing. I don't think I need the healing. Um, now nah, let's, yeah, sure. Take her back. It's burned. Now we can take the uh, the action card or the ability card. Back, that is. We'll just go invisible. Sure. Why not? That way, this one's going to come over here and actually attack him. Skip and disarm. And this turn. And I think, actually. Um, do I might take a step back first? I don't know if I want to stand here. Actually, we'll take a step up here. I think this will be one of the better spots to pick up as much money as possible. This one might be a better. Yeah, let's go there. Skip and done. I could have killed this one, but I mean, it's, it's just gonna... One of them is going to attack, so I might as well stun one of them. There we go. Three damage is still sufficient. Okay. <clears throat> I could use fire orbs, right? I do have this other loot card, so I, we want to be moving into a position that... Uh, ...does the most... I mean, he's already going to pick up a lot of loot. Oops. No, I wanted fire orbs. Let's use flashing burst just to move into a... A spot one, two, three, four, and then from there I can make a, a nice attack as well. Um, let's use Toxic Bolt to put some. I guess this we could heal ourselves a little bit and Spare Dagger, and let's just use well, I could use Skewer actually. So Spear Dagger, Skewer, try and kill her right now. They're both going after us, which is nice. And let's see here. You want to poison this one. I can actually use that. I think, yeah, it doesn't really matter. They're going to be standing in one spot anyway, so. Oh, very nice. Uh, let's just use it now. And we'll heal himself. Nice. Spell Weaver. Oh, I can't. I need to make sure not to kill her, actually. Because if I'm. Yeah. I didn't think about this. Uh, if we kill her, then it's over. Let's try and kill them, though. Um. 
Oh, damn. Yeah, I didn't really think about this. I'd like to be picking up all of this loot if possible. So... Let's use this and just kind of run around in a circle to pick up that extra point. <clears throat> the XP skip and then we just won't attack her at all. Uh, he will be getting hit, but it's going to be a disadvantage. That's quite a bit of damage, but I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be worth it. Let's pick up that loot and we'll go at 20. Let's short rest with him so that I can pick up the uh, hook gun. We can heal him up as well. Or we can use Toxic Bolt instead. Let's use Toxic Bolt to try and kill her uh, quickly. Short rest here. Yep. Disarm and maybe Spare Dagger. Um, my thought being if she doesn't end up dying, then we can actually have her disarmed anyway. So, yeah, we'll go with this. I think she'll be dead. Ooh. Well, I guess disarming her now is going to be a good idea anyway. So, let's poison her. Stunned. So, I don't have to worry about her at all. And then hit again with the disarm. <laughs> okay. End skips her turn yeah let's use that I, I don't see a reason not to use it good now let's loot as much of this as possible 15 gold yeah that was completely worth it waiting that one extra round uh, same thing here let's use this good and then just pick up the rest of the money 51 gold in total uh, not bad it was it was worth it to take that extra I don't know like five minutes or so um, really didn't add too much time to the to the scenario but it it worked uh, in our favor to pick up all of that gold all right, as the last bow falls to the ground, you patch your wounds and head off towards the pub. I thought we were in the pub. So reach the slush squirrel. Okay, E to keyport. Uh, there's no I in mercenary guild. Guld, if you get it. There's no I in mercenary guild. Um, this is uh, this is something new, and I'll let that wait until the next episode. And let's see here. So, Spellweaver with the most kills and damage. Um, eight kills, 62 damage. That's nice. I still... I still wish that they would get rid of this uh, pairing here. Record should only be used for personal record instead of saying record and put a shield because then you put the shield to show that you're first and then record should just be like the personal record or it could be the total record I don't know I think personal record would be really cool because then you can see oh wow the spellweaver that's the first time she's reached eight kills ever in the entire campaign that would make it more interesting than saying shield and record. You know what I mean? Record for the scenario is where they're going with it, and I get it, but that's already said with the shield. So, okay. Anyway. Um, damage taken, of course, always the brute. And we looted 17 total 
uh, gold piles. And the brute root looted none of them, so... Um, I think the tinkerer might have picked up six of them at the end. I remember him doing one at the beginning in the first room, but... Um, it looks like the Spellweaver and the Brute might be leveling, if I remember correctly. I think they might be leveling. So let's exit. Of course, this is going to happen in the next episode. Um, but that might be sooner than Tuesday. We'll see. I, I kind of think that I might be able to put another one out very soon. Uh, but no promises. Okay, the landlord was pretty happy when you arrived. Apparently the guests had run out of money and had run up an all, almighty tab. <laughs> okay. He supplied me with some of the special stuff from the basement. It helps you hit harder. If you can remember what it is you're supposed to be hitting. Okay, fair enough, I guess. So, yes, both of them barely leveled up, but that's that's fantastic. I'm excited to, to see their new cards, both level 4 cards. As you can see, the first uh, couple or few scenarios, it was just the Brute and Tinkerer. And then I brought in the Spell Weaver as a, kind of an extra fun uh, element to use the elements um, and to have a bit more fun but she's already surpassed the tinkerer in uh, experience I mean it, he, she's just a monster when it comes to the leveling up um, right so in unlocking uh, the slosh squirrel we've also unlocked the imbalance of the elements which would start giving uh, perk points to the spellweaver and progressing her story um, I don't know too much about how uh, I've made it pretty far on the stories but I don't know what happens if there's like a last one and it's all done I don't know when that happens I've I've played pretty far into into the game into the campaign but i haven't like finished the campaign um not yet anyway i'm hoping i can before the actual campaign uh opens up so i can finish this campaign and then start the next the the actual gloomhaven campaign with this with, on the channel so anyway we still have vermling village Oh, this is a new one too, actually. This one unlocked from the last episode. So, uh, the Vermling Village would gain a perk point for the Brute. Uh, this one is not available yet. The Imbalance of the Elements. Perk point for the Spellweaver. We have a new location. Uh, a new travel scenario. This would unlock Shadowfield Manor which is needed for uh, the Thesis, which is a, a Tinkerer quest. Unlikely Alliance down here. And Lockdown, lockdown and Lowtown. Uh, none of the relics are available at the moment. And we have Sacred Pilgrimage, Night Raid, and Jin Palace. So that's where we'll leave off uh, today. And in the next episode, we will level up the Brute and the Spellweaver, which will be pretty exciting. Um, and take a look at another scenario. So. Once again, thanks for stopping by, and I hope to see you next time.